So just at the core, I think a really good concept is to understand this thing called blockchain. And the way that I think of it is a block is something, it's really just a list of transactions. And it used to be that if you were working with a bank, they'd have essentially one block or one big spreadsheet. And if you changed one transaction on it, uh, it could cascade all the way down and it could change results. So you could, you always had to be suspicious and auditing um, where, how do we know that nobody has messed with this transaction log? Well, the way that the blockchain works is it puts just a smaller set of these transactions into a block, which is then locked with a hash. And I'll talk a little bit about what a hash is, but just the, the concept that the, the hash is cryptographically generated as a unique number that can only uh, be produced by that whole set of transaction before it. So it's a derivative number. And there's a thing called consensus. So the group that's included in the consensus is a process help to close the block and generate the hash. So that means over and over, there's a, there's a group. They agree that this is what happened in a time period. They produce a hash that closes a block. And then that hash goes into the next block, which makes, uh, that's the first transaction. And so if anybody ever changes the first block, it'll impact the second block. So each one is verifying the next one. And just to like, what is the hash, right? So any text, it gets converted essentially to a number. It's put through a formula that you, it creates a unique number. Now, the thing is that number can't be back calculated to decide the original text. It's like if you had a hundred numbers and at the end you said, all right, we're going to check this by adding them all together and just seeing what the last digit is or seeing if it's an odd number, an even number. Um, one of those types of formulas here, there's an example, is SHA3. That's a, a more modern one. There's a number of different uh, formulas, often using prime numbers to be able to, uh, to, to calculate these hashes. So the word makehaven to a hex number is right there. And you can see I did makehaven with a space. It's a very similar hex number. But once you put it through H, uh, SHA3, uh, you get entirely different resulting hashes. And that's part of how it's not transparent. So any small thing will result in a totally different number. And this is what makes up transactions within the, uh, the blockchain for Helium. Uh, so this is a test transaction that I did with a, with a friend. And uh, all that goes into the ledger is who is the payer. And that's not my name, but that's actually a hash of my, um, of, of what I have in my, my, what you can do is you can salt your hash so you can keep generating different hashes that are unique uh, just by adding a little salt or adding a little number to the, whatever the core name is. So you never let go of your 12 words, but you can keep generating different hashes in order to be a destination for somebody to pay and only you would be able to, to get there. Um, and then within the block, you can see that there's all sorts of other things happening, not just transactions, but there's rewards, there's mining, there's these things called witnessing, and they are being assigned to a place in the block height. Um, and then th those will eventually be closed as blocks. Now, the other part of this is uh, Wi-Fi. So uh, there's just, there's a very big spectrum uh, in the electromagnetic spectrum, a very big range, I guess you'd say. Um, and as you start to look where it says like skyscrapers and mountains, you're in the, uh, the larger big wavelengths. These are very long transfer of uh, various items. Um, what is this, uh, what is this useful? So Laura is in the, um, the very large wavelength. And that means that with very low energy, it can go through a lot of items and uh, be deployed. Why would this be useful? Well, you might want to, like this gentleman, Jacob here, is uh, deploying a temperature water quality sensor. Uh, you might want to create this little, this is a tab that's talking to a phone. It's giving up. You, you can learn some about what we're doing. Which um, I'm gonna mute, looks like my neck. Um, the, uh, 
And then there's like devices. So you can do anything that needs to talk to the network. So just representing that, you have all these little Wi-Fi signals all over the place. And um, rather than using like cellular antennas, which are use more energy to reach, what you do is you deploy these hotspots. So I have three hotspots here, uh, and they can each talk, sometimes to multiple of these deployed devices, sometimes just to one, but they're capturing the data that's trickling out uh, at a very small rate from these devices that are optimized for long distance communication. And then those hotspots are communicating to each other, uh, the, the thicker dotted line, and also to the internet where they are synchronizing their blockchain with the other ones in order that everybody knows all the transactions, everybody can agree, and it can't be faked. Uh, there's a lots of different devices now that are available. I'm using the first hotspot, but there's several hotspots that have come out, essentially routers. Uh, here I am installing the one on Makehaven in a uh, weatherproof location, and I've also added a antenna to get better range. And why do I care about range? Well, that's because uh, my hotspot can reach many people around the, the area. You can see these yellow dots are uh, not people, but hotspots that I've reached in our region. Uh, and I'm getting rewarded uh, for all of those hotspots that I'm able to communicate with. Essentially, there's these things called challenges that say, I bet you can't reach this hotspot who can't reach this hotspot. And if you're selected at random within these challenges, you can... Um, you can then earn credits for those uh, for those successful communications. Uh, these are just some shots from my my app. This is the app on my phone, and you can see uh, this is a shot from earlier today. Some of these rewards, these mining rewards. Now it's called mining as you prove the coverage and meet these challenges and communicate with others. Uh, and I'm getting a pool of these mining rewards of this made up uh, cryptocurrency. Now this is rewarded in the cryptocurrency. In this case, I converted it to dollars. So you can see what the current equivalent value of uh, dollars is. Uh, you can see that I'm getting more witnesses. This is on the second uh, one that I'm getting a fair amount of challenges. So that's decreasing over time. As more hotspots are joining the network, the rewards and the share has been decreasing. And then I have a wallet. Uh, you can see that there's a hashed um, QR code there. And that's a fine thing for me to show. If I showed you my 12 words, anybody could steal my money. But uh, I can show you that because what you can do there is you can send me money, which is I'm okay with. Um, and that is the, the oh, it's a truncated hash underneath it. Now, how does this come into play with money? Well, this, uh, each one of the HNT, these unique uh, cryptocurrency uh, entities which are entered onto the blockchain and they only exist because they've been entered on the blockchain and everybody in the consensus group agrees they exist. Well, they're, they only exist digitally as a medium of exchange for this network of devices and routers and people. But there's a fair amount of speculation that this network will be successful and it's had a very uh, good beginning. And so based on that, folks are thinking that this is going to have a, a lot of value. And so it's risen these, these cryptocurrency tokens from you know, 20 cents to eight or even $10 at times uh, in value that you can exchange it on the market. But there's no guarantee it will stay there. It's all uh, related to speculation. There is an economy around this. So they are uh, doing what's called halvings. So as, the, uh, as time goes on, the amount of original HND that's being generated by the hotspots talking to each other is going to be having, 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 it's going to be reduced. And uh, as little devices are utilizing this currency, so people will pay money to buy HNT, that then is the fuel to have their devices communicate, those will be burned, those credits go away as those devices communicate. So creating, creating a scarcity and driving up the price. Um, and then the scarcity of them being generated from the hotspots will be there. So there's a whole economy. And then as um, that happens, there's a maximum supply and things can be, credits can be regenerated as they are burned on schedule. Uh, it's more than I can get into at the moment, uh, but folks have been very thoughtful 
about how this works. And it does make me think that some of the earlier, more easily earned HNT may have greater value in the future so that individual unprofessional speculation. Uh, you can get a sense of like how those dynamics may come into play just by looking at the backlogs of the devices themselves and how they're deploying slowly. As more devices come out, the, the rewards pool will be shared, but still likely substantial. Uh, and there's various data that's available on these dashboards um, counting down like 130 days to the first uh, halving where the reward pool will be halved. Um, how many data credits have been there? How many times have the block faster closing? So I know that's a drink from a fire hose, but I wanted to at least give folks the opportunity for a technical dive into the background of it uh, in about 15 minutes. And it looks like I was fairly close to that.